Hi everyone and welcome to today's video about Wondershare Mora. and today's tutorial I want to teach you how to do um, some fine control of the audio levels within an actual clip. Now we all know how to change the volume levels of a track in general and maybe also of the actual individual clip but maybe not how to fine tune the audio uh, levels within inside a clip. So for example um, if you have a voiceover and you have some background music then the background music may end up being quite quiet at the beginning and it then might start to come much more louder and you don't want it to drain out the sound of your voiceover. So what you want to do is just tweak the levels and sort of bring it down to that section and then raise it up again. And that's a process known as audio ducking. And I'm gonna teach you all about it and how to do it right now. Uh, is my current project inside Wondershare Filmora, which I'm going to use as an example to uh, demonstrate the keyframe for controlling the audio levels inside a uh, audio clip. Now I've got this tu uh, project and I've, it's basically a tutorial on gimbal techniques. Let me just play a few seconds of it so you can see what I'm talking about. Forward at the same time, almost flying over the foreground and stretch it up. So I've got basically a video and, and a voiceover and I've also got this background music. But notice at this point here where the waveforms get a little bit larger, the background music is getting a little bit too loud and it's starting to drain out the voiceover, which is not what I want. So at this point, it be, this is appropriate for adding in the keyframe to be able to um, sort of fine tune the audio levels. So at this point, about 6.15, what I'm going to do is position my playhead about just before the, where the waveforms get too large, and we're going to create a keyframe. Now we can do this in a couple of different ways. One way is basically going over to the audio properties on the right hand side, and we should see a little diamond shape just where we have the volume here. We can click on that guy, and on where we have the audio clip at the bottom, it's now inserted a little white diamond exactly where the playhead is. So that is a keyframe. Now the, the other way of doing it is to actually, if I just undo that, is to use the uh, keyboard shortcut, which is Alt, on the uh, Mac and I think Wind button on the Windows machine on the audio clip itself. And that should then insert the keyframe where the, key, the actual playhead is. Okay, so let me just uh, undo that. I'm just going to use the, uh, the diamond on the right hand side here. Okay, now what we notice is if we start to drag or change the volume on uh, just after the keyframe, because we've only got one keyframe, it actually increases the volume of the sound of the clip before, or part of the clip before, which we don't really want to do. We only want to do it for a certain section. So what we need to do is add another keyframe just a moment afterwards. So perhaps maybe like sort of just after here, we can now add a second keyframe like so. And if we now drag down the line just after the second keyframe, we have this sort of slope effects. So we're creating a sort of fade, I suppose, um, towards this section, which is exactly what we want to do. We want to just reduce the audio level of this loud section to be more or less equal to what it was previously, like so. And now if you start to play that, but at the same time, time, almost flying over the foreground, and stretch your arms out. Um, nicely control the volume um, just on that section so it's not too overbearing on the voice. Towards the end of that section, we can start to raise the audio levels because the audio waveform has, has dropped back to a much much quieter level and I'm just to bring it to that section and then give it a play. Come into focus which is not what we want and notice that the, uh, the music has almost completely disappeared so this is a perfect opportunity to create another keyframe. So I'm just going to position the, key, the playhead up, up in the appropriate place and we're just going to generate another keyframe there and once again we need to do it in a sort of in the couples I suppose so let's create ourselves a second keyframe like so and now what we can do is we can drag that section after the quiet section or after the section we wanted to control, which is the one just here, up again. And we're now sort of raising the volume of that quiet section to more or less be the same as the previous section. So if you notice uh, all the way along here, we have uh, sort of the waveform going and it's more or less the same throughout the entire track, which is exactly um, what we want to do when we're trying to do some audio ducking and not let it overpower our voiceover. And notice also we've sort of, we've kind of created a sort of U shape, so kind of um, coming the, vo the volume is coming up here and it's going down a bit, uh, a little bit quieter, and then we're just raising it once again. So let's just rewind it and just see if that works. It's blurred initially, 
and then it will come into focus, which is not what we want. Okay, perfect. So you, now the volume's much, this hasn't disappeared, you can still hear the background music. Now, just at, towards the end of the video clip, about here, upgrade options. Um, I no longer start speaking. So what I want to do is just um, create another little keyframe um, just to demonstrate further. I want the music to become much louder just while for the last sort of few seconds of that video clip. So once again, we can create another keyframe. And as always, I'm just going to create it in pairs. So I'm just going to bring it forward a tiny bit and click it again. And now if I raise that up, we are effectively creating another sort of step coming upwards and increasing the volume towards the end. So let's just rewind that. Object. Okay, so perhaps a little bit too loud. I'm just going to reduce that level a tiny bit. Now, that towards the end of the, the video clip, before I go to the next scene, what I want to do is also, is just have a straightforward fade out before we go into the next music track. And we can do that once again in a couple of different ways, as always. Now, the quickest way and easiest way is to use the fading control uh, on the end of the audio clip, which is a little circle here, or maybe it's a diamond, I'm not quite sure what it is. If we actually just click on that and drag it um, sort of to the left or inwards, notice we have this sort of triangle shape appear. So that's kind of creating ourselves a sort of uh, uh, fade out nice and easily. So let me just play that. Perfect. So we've got a little, a nice and quick and easy way of doing a fade out. But of course, if you didn't want to do it that way, but I do suggest you probably do, is you can also create that with a keyframe as always. So just where we want the fade out to finish, we can click on about here or set the playhead where you want it to uh, start. Click once again on our keyframe and we're going to, as always, create a secondary one. And I'm just going to probably do it more or less at the end of the video track, like so. And now we can just drag that guy, the one right at the end, all the way down to effectively create a fade out. And that should have exactly the same effect. Lovely. Okay, so that is perhaps a little bit too quick fade out, but that's the sort of thing we can do. And of course, if it is a bit too quick, what we can do is we can just uh, click on the previous uh, keyframe and just sort of drag it uh, leftwards if we want. And we can just uh, drag the one on the right uh, up a tiny bit so it's not quite so aggressive fade. Now, one other thing that could be useful uh, for you is to be able to jump between the various keyframes rather than trying to click on them, which of course you can do because if you click on them, you may notice you accidentally change the, the volume levels. So one way of doing it is to use the keyboard shortcut, and that is the uh, square brackets left and the square brackets right. And if I do that and click on uh, the, the square brackets to the left, it jumps to the previous keyframe. And if I press the other button, it jumps to the right. So it allows you to quickly jump between the various keyframes. So if you want to do, for example, delete a keyframe, then you could, let's say we'd want to delete one here. So it's selected with the time the time head, and then we're going to click on it until it's green, and then we click backspace to physically delete the keyframe. The other way of doing it is just to click on it or, uh, so it's actually selected, and then right click, and then we're going to do delete keyframe like so. Okay guys, well I hope you find that video useful about Wondershare for more, and of course if you do, uh, give it a big thumbs up, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And of course, um, as always, I always ask you to do this every single time, but it really is true. Hit that big fat red subscribe button to help the channel uh, grow and continue producing videos like this. Take care and I shall see you soon.